and welcome and the, uh, the uh, Committee on Education and Labor will come together uh, for, for the purpose of conducting a hearing on America's black colleges and universities, models of excellence and challenges for the future. One of the uh, primary focuses of this committee has been to make college more affordable and accessible so that every qualified student has the opportunity to go to college. We began last year by enacting a $20 billion increase in additional federal college aid over the next five years. In addition to providing low and middle income students with a much needed financial relief when paying for college, this new law also makes historic investments of more than a half a billion dollars in the historical black colleges and universities and Hispanic serving institutions and other minority serving schools. HBCUs provide critical higher education opportunities for African American, low income and educationally disadvantaged Americans. Historically, the historical black colleges and universities have played an especially significant role in opening the doors of college to African American students. During times of slavery and segregation, the HBCUs were the only institution that would admit African American students. Today, these colleges and universities are playing an increasing role in helping students succeed in college and strengthening our workforce and our economy. The National Association for Equal Opportunity in Higher Education released a new report just today showing the significant strides that black colleges are making to increase access to higher education and to boost our nation's global competitiveness. In 1994, slightly fewer than one million African American students were enrolled in either two-year or four-year undergraduate institutions, making up just over 9% of all college students. By 2004, the African American student enrollment had more than doubled, comprising about 13% of all college students. Over the past decade, enrollment rates at historical black colleges and universities have grown at a much faster rate than enrollment rates at all, of all college students. Although historical black colleges and universities represent only 3% of all college and universities, they enroll close to a third of all African American students. They serve a disproportionate number of all African American students pursuing careers that are critical to our competitiveness of this nation. 40% of their students pursue a four-year degree in science, technology, engineering, and math, and about half of all American, African American students in teaching fields attend HBCUs. But despite this progress, these institutions continue to face a unique set of challenges, including the limited resources and budgets. The historical black colleges and universities tend to have smaller endowments than other comparable institutions. Another recent study by the, by the National Association for Equal Opportunity in Higher Education found that during the 2004-2005 school year, not a single historical black college and, and university ranked among the, hot, the top 120 endowments in the country. Sadly, President Bush's recently released fiscal year 2009 budget proposes harmful cuts to the funding for historical black colleges and universities and other minority serving schools, which would only worsen the financial challenges that these schools face. In addition, many historical black colleges and universities are, are in significant need of repair and renovation, especially those that are still feeling the devastating effects of Hurricane Katrina. And some disparities still persist between students attending historical black colleges and universities and students at other comparable schools. Part of the reason the Office of Civil Rights and the Department of Education has pursued a compact agreement with several states to root out discrimination that minority students face. Clearly, there remains a great deal of work ahead to ensure that students at historical black colleges and universities and other minority serving schools have the same opportunity as students at other colleges. I am pleased to say that this Congress and this committee have taken some important steps to address these changes. In addition to our newly passed student aid law, the House also recently passed the College Opportunity and Affordability Act, H.R. 4137, which increases the amount of funding for historical black colleges and universities would receive for capital projects and repairs. It also expands funding eligibility for graduate student programs at HBCUs and other minority serving institutions and addresses the challenges of starting and growing endowments at these schools. Today we will examine the tremendous accomplishments of private and public historical black colleges and universities and learn more about the obstacles they continue to face. We will also hear more about the purpose of the compact agreements and whether or not the Office of Civil Rights is doing enough to protect the interests of students attending historical black colleges and universities. 
I want to thank our witnesses for joining us today, many of whom are in town for the National Association of Equal Opportunity of Higher Education's annual conference. Providing all Americans with an equal educational opportunities is at the center of our nation's civil rights history and the shared values. It's a core part of our efforts to give everyone a chance to pursue the American dream.